Shit, I haven't posted in so long. Is this what happens to all creators? They lose consistency and end up in that YouTube graveyard? Bro, holy! Bro, you scared the shit out of me. What? You didn't see me sitting here all this while? Um, no, I was working on something. <laughs> Your focus is not there, bro. Your mind has decayed into a neurotic chaos by thinking about your science too much. Uh, okay, what's all this VFX around you? Doesn't matter, bro. What matters is that you go to an environment which soaks you in the reverberations of the vibration of the positive sound energy. Uh, what? Yes, bro. For that, you should go to a temple. You idiotic atheists wouldn't know this, but our ancient yogis used to do this and they could walk on water, walk through walls and disappear with your money. Where are you getting all this? <laughs> That's this YouTuber. You're watching Science Talk. My name is Pranav, and let's check out the pseudo science that this channel String brings in his latest video. I've gotten a lot of messages asking me to debunk this guy. So let's get right to it. Before I do, there's a good chance that this fair use of content is gonna get a copyright strike from him because he doesn't like what I'm about to say in this video. In that case, you know what to do. Download this video and keep reposting it if it gets deleted. The confidence and cockiness you're gonna find in his video is inversely proportional to any signs you're gonna find in it. I've never seen greater misrepresentation of science and politics than done by this channel to forward their fear propaganda. People who are blind followers of this guy are the only ones who are gonna trust every word he says. Anyone who can think for themselves will see right through his bullshit. Let's look at why he's wrong. There's a mathematical result that says that any two people are probabilistically at a maximum separation of six people from each other. So let's take you and Shah Rukh Khan. You might know someone who might know someone who might know someone who knows Shah Rukh Khan personally. So this means you are at a distance of three people away from Shah Rukh Khan. Now this number is called the Bacon number. Go check it out. It's pretty interesting. The point here is that you don't really know Shah Rukh Khan, but if someone wanted to, they could associate you with Shah Rukh Khan by finding all these links in between. Now, this is what he did uh, in a recent video with Rihanna and the farmers protest to associate her with anyone he wanted simply to forward a certain political message. Many people have already spoken out about this. Here he is doing the exact same thing with random scientific phenomena to make a point glorifying temples. He gives a flow of arguments in this video which is surprisingly coherent and the problem is that the statements or the premises in his argument are completely wrong. Unfortunately, the people who watch this video might think he's making sense because of his coherence. Let me pop that bubble for you right now by examining this video. First he says, when sounds fall on a stone or a rock, they reflect and cause an echo. Sounds can reflect off of any reflective surface. It can be any hard and non porous surface and it's probably reflective like say this LCD TV screen or this wooden panel. There's one more thing. Let's look at what causes an echo. See, our ears have a property when we hear the same sound twice within a span of 0.1 seconds, we can't distinguish between the two sounds. This is called the persistence of hearing. So for an echo to be caused, it has to, the sound has to be reheard after 0.1 seconds. Do some quick math uh, with the speed of sound in air and you get this distance from you to the reflective surface to be about 17 meters. So the best place for this to happen is an open space like a mountaintop where sound can go more than 17 meters away from you, reflect and come back and you hear the same sound as an echo. 
it does not happen because of a stone or a rock as he says this is an open space imagine if you're doing it in a closed place what would be the amount of echo obviously much more than the open space this is completely wrong as i've shown you sound cannot travel uh, 17 meters away from you reflect and come back for you to hear an echo but pranav you might ask when i go to a new house with no furniture that room is very echoey that's not echo that's reverb or reverberation this happens because of multiple reflections in the room that cause sound to persist in the room even after the source of the sound stops making the sound soundproofing a room is done to prevent this exact thing another way of preventing reverb is to have a lot of stuff in the room things like furniture cause sound to reflect very unevenly making sound lose its intensity faster thus preventing reverb let's assume he meant reverb in his video when he said echo let's get inside the temple you will find a linga or a statue made of a rock now people send some sounds to the rock not just today it's been practiced since thousands of years interestingly enough the idol in the temple chamber is an irregular object in the room that prevents reverb rather than causing it so he gets this part completely wrong the sound will touch the stone and bounce back in different directions because it's a closed room the sound has to pass out through the main door and whoever is standing in front will be completely soaked in that energy so what does the sound do to the human body he explains this in the video let's look at what he says 72% of your body is water 12% is earth, 6% is air, 4% is fire and the remaining is space. Don't you think this sound has an impact on your system? The five element model is completely wrong. I've explained why it is before. Uh but and and how are you made up of 4% fire? Shouldn't you be getting like third degree burns all the time? I know what answer Sadhguru would have to that question. You may not be able to perceive it, but in a particular certain subtle way you are made up of uh fire partly <laughs> yeah if you add all those words then you no one can ever show you're wrong about anything now to substantiate what he says he uses a video as an example look at how drastically the water is responding to the sound similarly fire okay first This is not just any sound these are musical notes musical notes are standing waves that happen on a guitar string or in the air column of a flute if we put water or fire or anything that moves easily in on on a surface that vibrates like this or in an air column they going to move accordingly you can never say the same about the human body especially considering these are not simple musical notes that you hear in a temple Now people send some sounds to the rock not just today it's been practiced since thousands of years Then he says that the sounds you do here in a temple are things like uh, Vishnu Sahasranamam and Lalita Sahasranamam which are engineered in a particular way so as to make you either fall asleep or wake up in a fresh state of mind and he demonstrates this by taking his friend to a doctor and giving him an eeg reading he plays lalita sahasranamam on his phone and notes that there is a change in reading which honestly i can't really tell from just this shot but he uses this to confirm his own bias theory if he had played any song he would have noted a similar change in reading but hey that doesn't serve his agenda this also this shot of his friend's hand and it's supposed to imply that he is fallen asleep judging by how disingenuous he has been in his arguments so far i'm sure he faked this just to make his point and he says another thing here which i thought was really funny <laughs> the kind of parasynthetic differences that he is getting is anonymous oh my god anonymous seriously it's like he can say a big english word and whether or not it makes sense if he says it with enough conviction his bucks are gonna believe him 
and trust that he knows what he's talking about. He then talks about the Dwaja Stambam, which apparently stores the energy transferred to it uh, by the Gopuram. And uh, apparently that's why uh, people touch their heads on it and they just don't know the reason. Okay, even if the Gopuram was an antenna, an antenna cannot transmit sound energy, it can only transmit electromagnetic waves. So unless there was a microphone in the temple chamber and the Gopuram was a proper antenna, transmitting antenna with the necessary circuitry and there was a receiving antenna at uh, the uh, Dwaja Stambam, this is just plain wrong. Now in the whole video he's constantly mocking science but at the same time using science to validate what he says. You can't do that in a laboratory through some dumb experiment. All those who tried either ended up neurotic or died an utter failure. Wasted a lot of money in the research. Oh okay, interesting. Uh, what about that uh, sound experiment or uh, demonstration you showed earlier? Is that dumb too? Make up your mind maybe. Uh, is science a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, or is it only good when it's useful to you? Their idea is to benefit the human beings living in the city. It's a free service. Will your doctors treat you for free? Doctors are bad people who use their science and don't treat you for free. Temples, they do it for free. You heard it here, folks. If you have cancer or something, go to a uh, temple and get your free treatment. Don't go to doctors. All they care about is money. I'm sure you watched Praveen Mohan's channel. He has done a mind-blowing work on temples. Our friend Praveen Mohan. Why am I not surprised? There is one point that he says that I do agree with. There are some really smart architectural designs in some of these temples. One example is the Brihadeshwara temple in Tanjavur, which has a kumbum or the apex on top of the temple. Um, which is carved from a single stone and weighs something like 80 tons. That is some mind-blowing ingenuity from the architects who built it. And these temples need to be preserved and protected for this reason. And even if you're an atheist, I'm sure you'll agree with me. But for these bugs, these mind-blowing facts are not glorious enough. They need to come up with these a ridiculously exaggerated non-existent science to justify all these things. If you misrepresent science for your benefit, people are gonna call you out. And that is what I'm doing here. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, remember, science is dope.